What is a fact about the human body that not many people know about? The hyoid bone is a bone not attached to any other bones in the human body, and is only it's also an indicator of the type of strangulation occurs, if it's manual or physical. As it's the bones that kills you breaks when people hang. One such suicide by hanging did not have his hyoid bone broken, the certain person did in fact show breakage in his hyoid bone, and that it can only be caused by throttling. It is the C2 bone I confuse myself on which indicates hanging. If that breaks you either snap your spinal cord or it can, depending on how you hang, spike into the delicate area on the underside of the skull. Apologies for the confusion I hope I have not caused offense or outrage to anyone. My information came from a relative who worked as a doctor, and as an anatomist, but it was some time ago. Considered the anchor of the tongue. There are tiny cilia, that spin in a certain direction. If they spin in the opposite direction, while you're developing in the womb early on, that is how you get organs transposed onto the opposite side of your body. I remember we had a doctor visit our school during careers week who said he'd met three patients with flipped organs, and each time he called in a medical student, and asked them to take the patient's heartbeat. Apparently, it was really funny watching the student put the stethoscope on the left side, and seeing the color drain from their face. When doing surgery, where the doctors have to take out some organs, when placing them back, they don't have to be put back in the exact position they're meant to be, your body kind of just, moves the organs into the correct position after the surgery. I lived this last year. I was about a month into my pregnancy, when I caught my toe on something in the garage. It peeled back the top half of the nail, but I quickly pushed it back down and to my surprise the nail stayed it on, even though it bled then turned black after. I remember being about 8 months pregnant and wondering, if the toenail would be finished growing out, so no blacker showed by the time the baby arrived. I think I still had a sliver of black when I gave birth. So that took about 8 months for just the top half of the toenail to grow out. You hate the sound of your recorded voice, because it's missing the low frequency you're used to hearing. When you talk, you hear your voice as it goes to the air and back to your ear. It also goes through your skull to your ear and this bone conduction mechanism transmits the low frequencies better than air does. Your recorded voice only has the air transmitted sound. That causes the dissonance between what you think your voice sounds like, and what it really does. It's also why your voice will, almost, always be higher pitched than you think. There's a right and a wrong way to swallow, and the first swallow pattern you learn, isn't the right one. Babies swallow by pushing their whole tongue forward, since it's better for nursing. However, as you transition to solid foods, you are supposed to change to a swallow, where you put the tip of your tongue on the roof of your mouth and roll the food back. Not everyone does, and those that don't, are more likely to choke, eat too fast, develop dental problems, and some develop a lisper distorted sounds as they learn to talk. After seeing many of the comments, and other professionals bringing up good ethical points, I feel the need, to add some extra info and disclaimers. I did not intend to imply, that anyone who feels they swallow wrong based on this information, has to get an evaluation therapy. I only wanted to share information I find fascinating, and let those with concerns or fear know that you have the right to seek a professional, if you so desire. If I did encourage you, or you felt I did, I only meant to encourage you to feel comfortable seeking out professional advice or assistance. Any techniques or screeners mentioned are only that, and cannot identify a disorder. Only an evaluation with an appropriate professional can do that, and that professional can vary with a variety of factors. If you do try to analyze your swallow, please don't actively try the incorrect swallow. It can potentially be unsafe to try any swallow you are not used to. Please be careful, if you decide to disregard this warning. I did not intend to imply, that just because you have any of the aforementioned characteristics, that you have the wrong swallow. I did not intend to imply, that this type of incorrect swallow, is the cause of whatever difficulties, scary moments, etc. you experience. Thank you all for all the interesting stories, questions, comments, and feedback. I hope you enjoyed a little awareness about something most people never think about, and found any correlations, but not necessarily causations, as interesting as I do did. Eyes have immune privilege, as do the testicles, added, and ovaries have immunosuppressive follicular fluid, look at me forgetting my own balls. 
and the central nervous system, sword. Also, the placenta and fetus, added, and more, this isn't a full list of immune privilege sites. The normal inflammation immune response will fuck all those things completely up. They all have different ways of dealing with it, but can still get infections and autoimmune diseases. The reason it's so easy to break your collarbone is because it's designed to break. The way it was explained to me is that it's like a circuit breaker. It breaks there to stop the shock of impact getting to your spine. For all those taking issue with it, designed is just the word I use. I am not trying to argue or implicate the hand of a higher power. I am not going to change it. If I believe in a god or not really has nothing to do with it. It's a discussion about the human body not religion. You all just need to chill your beans, who really cares? I don't. When you get conditioned to physical activity, your circulatory system adapts, more blood, more vessels, more blood cells. But your lungs really don't. This is because, no matter how much blood your heart is able to deliver to your lungs, the lungs still have no problem oxygenating it. This is why your oxygen saturation doesn't drop during exercise, unless you have a heart defect. Elite endurance athletes can push themselves hard enough to the point of creating noticeable oxygen desaturation during bouts of maximal intensity exercise. This is largely due to three factors, the first being the mass of venous blood return, the second being large cardiac chamber filling, and the third being high heart rates during this maximal intensity. These elite athletes are able to pump such large volumes of blood per beat, that the deoxygenated blood isn't spending enough time in the lungs, to become saturated to a typical 96-98%. to 98%. Your brain regulates how strong your muscles are. If your leg muscles were to contract at full strength, they would snap your femur. It's why people in emergencies on adrenaline, can lift cars off children. Your body is capable of great strength, but it could also severely damage you, so your brain keeps you a weak soft bag of jelly. Your stomach is surrounded by more brain cells, half a billion neurons, than the brain of a cat contains in total. It's your enteric nervous system. It controls digestion, operates autonomously, has its own memory, can handle its own reflexes, it has its own senses even. It's thought to have come about, because of the blood-brain barrier, and the main brain being locked away in the skull, a spinal column and nerves away from the critical action of nutrition. I have autism and I've heard about these treatments, that focus on correcting the bacteria and the guy to help with symptoms. Apparently, your gut controls a lot of your brain. Okay because so many people are seeing this, I really want to tell you, how I found this out. One day on our autism there was this post about introducing fecal matter into another person with ads my mixing it with chocolate. I said so we finally find a cure to autism, and it's drinking a poop shake. As a total shocker, there was actually some truth and a lot of science behind this, and it is a real thing. It's to correct the bacteria in the gut, which controls a lot of how your brain works. I stayed up for three days straight in college finishing my senior engineering project. After I turned it in, I crashed hard for a couple hours, but dreamed I killed a girl with a pair of scissors. My mom was visiting, and found a pair of earrings, and started asking whose they were, and I knew, that she had figured out I was a murderer. When I woke up, I went out, and told my buddy, that I think I killed someone. He kind of laughed, but I sure wasn't. I felt absolutely horrible about it. It literally took me two full days, before I could finally say, that I probably hadn't killed anyone, but it was a full week, before I totally convinced myself. I pulled all-nighters before and saw shadows move and the usual minor hallucinations, but this was a totally different level of weird. Apparently about 20% of people have a bony ridge on the roof of their mouth. Most people's palates are smooth with a very slight ridge. The 20% like me have an exaggerated, and more pronounced ridge. Apparently, it's most common in women and Asian folk, and I'm neither so that's neat. I always thought it was totally normal. You can live normally with half your brain. In some severe drug-resistant epileptic syndrome in young kids, the only option to stop the seizures is to remove a complete brain hemisphere. After a while, with proper re-education and all, the children can go on to have a normal life without cognitive deficit. They will have a limping, blindness from one eye and a very rare arm, but can lead a normal life, and not end up cognitively impaired. 
One of the earliest signs of Alzheimer's disease, before the memory loss, could be the loss of the sense of smell. It's also the case with Parkinson's disease. Our brain looks wrinkled, because it is actually folded inside our skull, in order to fit a maximum of surface, and thus neurons and cell communications. Some animals like rodents have a completely smooth brain. X-rays of children's mouths are nightmare fuel. The second set of teeth to replace baby teeth are already grown and lodged in their skulls. So, you'll see two rows of teeth and it's freaky looking. They don't grow in when the old ones fall out, they are already loaded in the chamber waiting to get launched. Humans feel less satisfaction when they don't gain anything from an interaction. In other words, you get less dopamine or whatever feel-good chemical when you do something that basically has an equal cost and reward. This has led me to believe that free food does really taste better. It never made sense to me why cupcakes only tasted good when kids brought them in for their birthday. Whenever I'd buy them on my own, they tasted worse. I guess it's because my brain knows I spend money on them. Your body will reduce your muscle strength to protect your spine. Stand on flat ground, hold your arms out in a T-pose, and have a friend push down on your hand while you try to hold it in place. That's your control, how strong you actually are. Now, remove one shoe, or put a book under one foot, and repeat with your hips askew, so your spine isn't straight. An inch is all it takes. Your strength will be reduced to the point that your friend can use a single finger to push your hand down. Your brain likes stimulation. If it doesn't get any it will make some up. Some people are more susceptible to it than others. The colors you see before you fall asleep are a common mild occurrence. There are several classes of these hallucinations. Closed eye visuals, which are caused by leaving your eyes closed for a long time. Hypnagogic, which is caused by the onset of sleep. Prisoner's cinema, which is caused by looking into a dark place for a long time. Gansfeld effect, which is caused by blocking out all external stimuli and Charles Bonnet syndrome, caused by sight loss. Most of these are simple phosphenes, but some can be whole imagined scenes, or more abstract fractal-like imagery. Mitochondria, the powerhouses of our cells according to every high school bio teacher, are just bacteria, that permanently set up shop in our cells millions and millions of years ago. The heart can generate its own electrical impulses, i.e., action potentials, because it is constantly depolarizing. That's why a heart will continue beating even after it's removed from the body. When you have a bowel movement, your heart rhythm shifts temporarily due to a vague response. The reason Elvis died on the toilet was because his heart was beating 200 plus BPM, and the quick rhythm change caused a myocardial infarction. People with low heart rates have been known to pass out on the toilet because their bodies can't handle the shift. It's also why EMTs will absolutely not let you use the bathroom before getting on the ambulance. Especially if the bathroom is a standard 5x8. This is one of my favorite subjects. I wouldn't say that they are psychosomatic personally. We try to separate ourselves from our bodies, and that's just a farce. Anyway, it's actually like this. You experience a trauma. That trauma sends your brain into fight-flight freeze. You develop PTSD with which you find yourself being extremely self-protective and hypervigilant to ensure you do not experience that trauma again. Fight or freeze and PTSD are chemical processes. Your body gets PTSD too. So, the chemistry in your brain is telling your body there is a threat. Your brain is hypervigilant and your immune system is too. You both start seeing threats and things that are not actually threatening. Your immune system starts attacking parts of your body that it mistakes as foreign. This is very simplistic, and written on my phone, but it is fascinating. Humans form their digestive tract first of all the organs, starting from the anus. So, everyone was once just an a-hole. Update, apparently this is no longer the case, but we didn't cover that particular detail, when I took human development for some reason, leaving for context of the comments but would be more accurate, to say our distant ancestors were all a-hools at some point, evolution is very weird, so instead of evolving scales, armor etc, humans mostly just evolved to still be squishy with easily punctured skin, and developed redundant or duplicate organs.
you can lose several feet of your intestines and be fine. You only need one working kidney and one working lung. Your liver regrows, the heart can beat on its own, and you only need half your brain. If it is removed early enough in life, there's minimal to no deficits. A kidney donor has one kidney, but a kidney recipient typically has three. It's usually easier safer to just graft in the new kidney than to remove the old, assuming the old isn't dying infected, and just stopped working, most mothers are chimeras due to some fetal cells crossing the placenta. The cells can lodge and survive in the mother's body with no adverse effects. Speaking of chimeras, a woman once failed a maternity test, despite giving birth to her kids. Turns out she was a chimera from two zygotes that fuse, and her reproductive tract was from the absorbed twin, and had different DNA than the cells in her cheek, where the test sample was taken. Only cells collected from her reproductive tract matched her children. We all have a major artery called the ascending aortic artery, that runs down the center of our abdomen. Another artery, called the superior mesenteric artery, branches off of that. There is a gap between the arteries, that is kept open by a pad of fat, and the start of our intestines, called the duodenum, passes right through the gap between the two arteries. Very rarely something can happen to shrink the fat pad, and then the arteries act like a clamp and pinch the duodenum closed. This prevents anything, solid or liquid, from passing from the stomach into the intestines. This is called superior mesenteric artery syndrome, and I had it. It is so rare, that it took two months of doctors excluding everything else for them to diagnose me. I couldn't keep anything down, and went from 120 to 90 pounds. I had to have, where my intestines were connected to my stomach moved to another spot, and have about 6 feet removed in the process. This was almost 7 years ago now. Other than having to eat more than I used to in order to maintain my weight, I'm okay. That is only one of the weird, and very rare medical conditions, that I'm living with, but you'd never know by looking at me. The human genome is about 8% virus DNA. Over millions of years, various sequences of virus genes have gotten stuck in our DNA, and copied faithfully ever since. Most of them are now non-functional, but at least a few of them seem to still work, and actually code for useful proteins. This suggests that viruses might occasionally serve as a helpful source of mutation in the evolutionary process.